Hello. This is a video on least common multiple. This is a number theory video. The textbook that we use uses the notation with these pointy brackets. Um, the notation is not standard. Other books use different notation, but this is the notation that our textbook uses. Kind of like in the last video, we we'll just take a quick peek here at Wikipedia. The beginning stages of finding least common multiple is the listing method. So if we want the least common multiple of four and six, we just list the multiples of four, four times one, four times two, four times three, and so on. And the multiples of six, six times one, six times two, six times three, and so on. And then we look through until we find the common multiples. The common multiples are 12, 24, 36, and so on. And the least common multiple is 12. Looking at our textbook, we're in section 2.4, the definition the least common multiple of two positive integers is the smallest positive integer. That is a multiple of both. Example 18, the LCM of two and eight is eight. The LCM of five and eight is 40. The LCM might be one of the two numbers. Now, what about prime factorization? Let's do the example similar to the one we did in the previous video. Find the prime factorization of each number and use the prime factorization to find the LCM. In the previous video, we did a factor tree for 120 and 249, and we found the prime factorization. Here's the prime factorization of 120, and the prime factorization of 924 is 2 squared times 3 times 7 times 11. And you might think of which factors we need to use in the least common multiple. It needs to be a multiple of each of these. So therefore, I'm going to need to use all of the factors. I'm going to need a 2, I'm going to need a 3, I'm going to need 5, I'm going to need 7, and 11. And we're going to take them to the highest power that they appear. Highest power on 2 is 3. Highest power on all the others is just 1. And if I multiply this out, I believe I get 9,240. Here is how we use prime factorization to find the least common multiple. First of all, oops, sorry about that. Find the prime factorization of each number. Oh, and I have a typo. This should be LCM. Let me fix that. To find the LCM, use all of the factors, each the highest power they appear in the original numbers and multiply out to get the LCM. Here's the way our book describes it. We can figure out the least common multiple of A and B once we have the prime factorization of A and B. Here's the prime factorization of A. P1 to the power of A1, P2 to the power of A2, through Pm to the power of A, I'm surprised it's not M. I think that's that's a typographical error. And B is P1 to the B1, P2 to the B2, through PM to the BN. And the greatest common, I'm sorry, the least common multiple is going to be P1 to the maximum 
of A1 and B1 times P2 to the power of the maximum of A2 and B2 through Pm raised to the power of the maximum of An through Bn. There's a little lemma here, lemma eight. A lemma is a theorem that is a statement that can be proved, but it does not have long-term use, but is for a particular use. And this is kind of an obvious statement. If you have two numbers, A and B, the minimum of A and B plus the maximum of A and B is A plus B basically because one of them is smallest and one of them is largest. As the proof is, assume without loss of generality that A is the larger one. The maximum is A, the minimum is B. Therefore, the minimum plus the maximum is A plus B. Theorem 18 has three parts. The second part is huge. First part is rather obvious the LCM of A and B must be at least zero. Secondly, and this is the key statement, it states the relationship between LCM and GCD. The LCM of A and B is equal to the product divided by the GCD. This second part of this theorem is huge. It is the relationship between LCM and GCD. Another way to state this is that the LCM times the GCD is equal to the product of the numbers, which is kind of nice. What it means is if we have one of the two, we can find the other. Let's look at the proof for part two. We start with the prime factorization of A and B. P1 to the A1, P2 to the A2, through Pm to the An, P1 to the B1 plus P2 to the B2 through PM to the BN. Now, as a comment here, it would appear that the primes are all the same. And in some sense, they are formally here. However, the exponents, for example, A2, might be zero. P2 to the zero power would mean, well, anything to the zero power is one. P2 to the zero power would mean that P2 is really not a prime factor of A. So some of these exponents might be zero. Recall that the greatest common divisor we take the minimum of the exponents and the minimum might be zero. And we saw that for the LCM, we take the maximum. So now we're going to be multiplying. We're gonna be multiplying this expression times this expression. The LCM is this expression and the GCD is this expression. Now, property of exponents, x to the a times x to the b 
is equal to x to the a plus b power. So we're going to have p1 to the max plus the min times p2 to the max plus the n through dot 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 pm to the max plus min. Well, we proved in our little lemma that max plus min is a plus uh, a1 plus b1, which gives us the Nix line. And then we use our property of exponents in reverse. P1 to the a1 plus b1 power is going to be P1 to the A1 times P1 to the B1. And they have rearranged the factors. Right here is A, and right here is B. So we have shown that the product of the LCM times the GCD is equal to a times b and this proves statement two now i would like to apply our theorem find the greatest common divisor and use it to find the least common multiple well let's first of all find the greatest common divisor of 14 and 20. When you're finding the greatest common divisor, if you can just do it by inspection, that's fine. The divisors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 14. And the greatest common divisor is just 2. LCM is equal to the product. divided by the greatest common divisor. This is part two of theorem 18. Let's see, 20 times 14, I think we do have a mental math strategy for that. 20, two times 14 is 28 and tack on the zero. And the GCD is two, so we get 140. Maybe in closing, we'll do some examples here to try to get a sense for this. So in the middle column, we're going to have the numbers. On the left, we're going to have the GCD. And on the right, we'll have the LCM. In our most recent example, the greatest common divisor of 14 and 20 was 2, and the LCM was 140. Notice that the greatest common divisor is smaller than the numbers, and the LCM is larger than the numbers. Let's say we have, for example, 5 and 10. It is possible for the GCD to be one of the numbers, but notice that it's smaller than both numbers. It's possible for the LCM to be equal to one of the number. The LCM here is 10, but it is still going to be larger. Trivial example, if the numbers are the same, the greatest common divisor is the same, and the least common multiple is the same. And maybe I'll end with probably one of the most important examples. If you have two numbers that are relatively prime, the GCD is one and the LCM is the product. Because if we use our key result, that the LCM is equal to the product of the numbers divided by the GCD, when the GCD is one, we just multiply them together.
This has been a video on least common multiple. I want to encourage my Math 407 students here at Western Illinois University to give me a call if you have any questions. Have a great day.